Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, June 3rd, 2014. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Head of the Traffic Department, Superintendent Kenneth John, said that it is still too early to determine when the stop and check on omnibuses for insurance will commence. SP John said that the measure is likely to commence sooner rather than later. SP John told SVG TV News that he was currently in a meeting with the Omnibuses Association's President Anthony Bacchus, outlining how the checks will be carried out. He further stated that he would be meeting with his officers for a briefing. According to Superintendent John, Superintendent John, the meeting is necessary because he wanted his officers to remain as professional as possible during the entire process. Meanwhile, SP John reminded all omnibus operators and owners to ensure that they have a copy of the insurance certificate at all times in anticipation of the procedure. The stop and check measure is part of efforts by the police to clamp down on the number of uninsured vehicles on the roads, which was highlighted at a recent meeting with the police and members of the Omnibuses Association. At that meeting, it was reported that in a recent accident on the Fountain Road, two of the three omnibuses involved were uninsured, a situation which the police say they will not tolerate. The motion on the state of the reparations effort in this country was put to a vote and passed last evening in Parliament, despite the lack of support from opposition members. And during his contribution to the debate, Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves explained that he had in his possession the draft notice of complaints which he said he was hoping would be adopted before the end of June. Dr. Gonsalves said once the draft had been adopted, then he will be able to send an official letter of complaint to the French, British and Dutch governments as it relates to reparations. He said that he was hoping to accomplish this during his tenure as chairman of CARICOM. I've been working with the lawyers and I have a draft notice of complaint here. I have shown it to Dr. Lewis. He's still working on it. And I'm hoping I've circulated it to all the heads of government in CARICOM, including President Martelly of Haiti. And I'm hoping when the Prime Ministerial Subcommittee on Reparations meets on the 16th by video conference, that we'd be able to adopt this. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves has warned that individuals must not get distracted by what he termed as trivial matters when dealing with an important subject matter such as the issue of reparation. Dr. Gonsalves told Parliament that reparation is too important a subject matter to be trivialized. I want us, first of all, Mr. Speaker, to affirm, to assert that reparations is a subject which is too important to trivialize. For example, there are those who seek to trivialize it by saying that reparations must first be made by every Tom, Dick, Harry, and Mary who consider this or that Caribbean government or leader had wronged them. And we have to deal with those first. Well, the fact of the matter is this. There are remedies for those. If everything you call for is reparations, and you use it for everything and anything, it loses its real meaning. And that is what those who are supposed to pay us reparations want us to do and fight them ourselves about. The motion tabled by Government Senator Jomo Thomas in Parliament last Thursday calls for reparations claim to be lodged within the framework of the 10-point reparations agenda adopted by CARICOM. Meanwhile, Opposition MP for the Northern Grenadines, Dr. Godwin Friday, in his contribution to the debate, said people who have good work to do should do it and let history be the judge. He was at the time making reference to Clause 4 of the motion, which reads to put on record high regard and commendation to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez for his commitment to and determination in initiating the reparations conversation. My grandmother used to tell me that self-praise is no recommendation. And this 
is one of the problems that I spoke about earlier, about the nature of the personalizing and the politicizing of this very important issue. This is not a one-man crusade. This is not a soapbox for any one person, any politician, even someone as eloquent as our Honorable Prime Minister. So let me leave the bill to deal with the substantive issues. The motion to deal with the substantive issues. And then we can say that it's serious. Friday says, given the nature of the importance of the subject matter, it baffles him that a private member of the House on the government side was the one to table the motion. I heard the Honourable Member for North Leeward, I mean North Windward, saying that today is one of the best days of his life because he gets to debate this motion. And I'm happy for him. But he's a minister, he could have brought it as well. The Senate is a private member. The private member's business is not the government's business. That's the definition, read the rules. So Mr. Speaker, I wonder, well, you'll have to say that. But the point is, how serious is it? How serious is it if you can't take some time out of the government's business to have a minister introduce it as a matter of government business? Or is it just the continuation of the game where you bring a private member's bill to prevent the members on this side of the house from having a private member's bill debated? As you can see, we didn't even bother with it this year. Because when the speaker says that we can bring a motion to have our bill heard, that's the height of condescension because he knows that the motion can never pass. Think economically and conserve is the advice given to students of the Clare Valley Government School by their principal, Godfrey James. Today, the school hosted its annual career fair twinned with the launch of the Morris Slater Memorial Scholarship Fund. Jim said they saw the need to honor Morris Slater who contributed significantly to the annual career fair. That it is our pledge that the career day fair in the Clare Valley Government School would continue and we are hoping that it is going to continue for as long as the school exists. We think that the effort of Mr. Murray Slater in sponsoring this worthwhile activity is worth remembering and we would endeavor to do so. Meanwhile, feature speaker Alan Burnett told the students they must begin planning for their careers. Burnett noted that in life one cannot just get up and decide to go anywhere, it should be planned. We must have goals and objectives in life. I knew I was coming to Clay Valley this morning. So when I came, when I went in my vehicle, and I got to Kingstown, I realized I'm not going to stay there. I'll have to take the leeward end. My goal is to get to Clay Valley. And therefore, you need to have goals in life. You need to know where you are going. He said planning ahead will help a person to make right choices. Nothing is permanent. Jobs today will be gone tomorrow. Long ago, when one goes to the bank, you go to the teller. Today, you can bypass the teller. You go to the ATM. Just now, you may not have any need for the tellers. So we have the ATM. Therefore, you will need persons who will be able to deal with the ATM. Those who may be to repair, to build, to do something with the ATM. So I'm saying here that nothing is permanent. Things change. The Mystique Charitable Trust, MCT, has provided a grant of $28,560 to support the nutrition project in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. 
The grant is to provide training in nutrition education and relevant printed material for use in schools. It is anticipated that the grant will improve the nutrition standards for school meals in keeping with national nutrition, health and development policy. Local fashion designer Shanicia Mez recently participated in an international fashion show in Paris. She was one of the few Caribbean designers who got the opportunity to showcase her designs at La Aboïthique in Paris, the mecca of the fashion world. In an interview with SVG TV News, Mez says she was delighted to have been selected to participate in the event which attracted designers from across the world and that the experience was humbling. And it was really a unique experience for me because I got to showcase my designs on another platform and I got pieces sold and they gravitate towards it really well so I was really happy about that. How many pieces that you took? What were, what were some of the designs that you took with you? Most of it, it was ready to wear garment. Um, it's from swimsuit to shorts because I wanted to depict that Caribbean woman, you know, even though we have casual stuff, we also do work. We have that sophisticated dress. And uh, from knee-length dresses to gowns. Mayors who have been designing from a young age says at the fashion event in Paris, she was ecstatic when a model who participated in the American and British top model competitions took notice of her designs and wanted to mother them. She was there as a designer doing frilly socks and she said that she loved my stuff so much that she wants to model a piece and she did and everybody was saying that is so good because as, as a model she don't, she don't go for free or cheap and for she to do something like that for me that was really good. As a young designer, Mayor says one of her major challenges is finance but she's determined to push forward. A lot of challenges, like for example, being a part of Labo Ethnic, paying registration fees, airfare and everything, it was hard because you have to fight every day, it's a battle, and getting sponsors is a bit hard, but I have to say praise God for, um, I, said, I say Auntie Kitty now, but uh, Miss Israel, Dr. Israel, she was really, she threw her whole self in it for me, and she asked her friends and her colleagues, and other challenges like when I get there, like people keep asking me, okay, if you're not based here, how can I get your clothing? How can I get your designs? Do you sell online? Do you ship overseas? And most of them, I have to tell them that I would have to get back to them. I could take it, their contacts because I now have to go and find out how do you ship to such, such far areas? What's the costing? Because, you know, from there on, they would want to know so much other things. Okay. You so... It's about perfecting my art every day. Uh -huh. It's about giving customers my best. Uh -huh. And I would really like to, to export and have that, that avenue where no matter where you are in the world, you are able to wear Atelier Shanicia. Uh -huh. Welcome to Carnival Beat. As the carnival celebrations draw closer, law enforcement officers will be cracking down on would-be offenders with regard to the No Bottle Policy Act, which came into effect in 2006. The police have recently arrested and charged 20-year-old John Kane, an unemployed resident of Richmond Park, for violating the act on June 1, 2014. Kane appeared at the Kingston Magistrate Court today and pleaded guilty to the charge. The court heard that on the date in question, while at the circus swing at Victoria Park, the accused, along with three other men, were seen consuming beer from a breakable bottle. The police is said to have approached them and asked them to desist from doing so. Three of the men complied and poured their drinks in the plastic glasses, while Kane, on the other hand, refused to do the same. Before imposing a $500 fine on Kane, Senior Magistrate Rachel and Bill Matthias commended the police for their work and said that she would like to see more offenders brought to the court, including the vendors. Kane was ordered to pay $200 forthwith or face a two-week jail term. The balance is expected to be paid by Friday the 13th, June 2014, failing which Kane will face five weeks at the prisons in capital Kingston. 
Happy and relieved are the adjectives used by Chairperson of the Beauty Shows Committee, Cheryl Rodriguez, to describe the staging of the 2014 Miss SVG pageant last Saturday, May 31st, at Carnival City, Victoria Park. In an interview with SVG TV News earlier today, Rodriguez explains that her committee feels extremely proud of the performances by all eight contestants last Saturday, as they give an excellent account of themselves. They delivered to the public and the patrons who came to Victoria Park what they promised. They promised a night of exciting, energetic and entertaining performances and they did that. All of our girls worked extremely hard over the past months and we had them drilling them at the two dress rehearsals that we had on Wednesday night and Thursday night. It was really rough on them but they did their best. We are very, very happy, right? And I congratulate them and commend them. We love our girls and we are here for them. We have said to them, if you ever need us at any time, call on us. We are here for you. The training we went through for the past five months, they took it in and I want them to live that training every day of their lives. Meanwhile, Rodriguez thanked the general public and the technical team who ensured a smooth production and all others who supported the show. Happy at patrons from all across St. Vincent and the Grenadines because on our road trips we visited all the communities from which the girls, in which the girls reside. And all, I'm sure there were persons from all the communities that came out to, you know, um, make sure the girls, they shouted for their girls. So I'm really very happy that the park was filled. I want to congratulate Shalisha on winning the crown and also the other girls who placed Carla and Shaquille and all the other five contestants because some of them got some different awards right. right some special awards they all did well and right we are going to prepare Shadisha for Miss Carvel so I'm meeting with her and came on this morning right after this interview with you they're coming in at 10 30 so we can go through their contracts with them and let them know what is expected of them and how she must prepare for Miss Carvel because we have uh, nine countries coming from abroad and she has to compete with them. Meanwhile, forms are now available for artists who wish to perform in the Raga Soka and Soka shows organized by the CDC this year. Registration for both competitions closes on Friday the 14th, June 2014. According to the CDC, preliminary judging for the Raga Soka competition will be done on Saturday the 14th, June, and preliminary judging for the Soka Monarch competition will be done on Monday the 16th, June, at a venue to be announced. The competitions will be held on Saturday the 5th, July 2014, at the Victoria Park. The CDC says all registration forms must be accompanied by a copy of the song on a CD, which should be ready for airplay with a $30 registration fee. Though challenged by limited financial resources to put together its 2014 mass production, the Guinness Wide Delima Hits 103.7 Blondie Bird and Friends says it is moving ahead full steam to build the band this year like no other. In this report by Jermisha Wright, we get a glimpse of what can be expected from Blondie Bird and Friends for Vinci Mass 2014. As part of its 20th anniversary this year, Guinness Wide Dilemma Hit 1037 Blondie Bird and Friends would be portraying heat for Vinci Mass 2014. So we did all everything hot. Yeah, right? Right. Right. And how many sections do you have? Well, we're in 10 sections this year as usual, as usual. So that's eight adults and two children. Right, yeah. But we set for section is fireworks, which is children, boys and girls. Alright, so this is that's them. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. walk through them. Yeah. This is this boys and girls fireworks, right? right? This is really a competitive section. The two band competitive, but this is really we pretty much we just show people we could be fancy and we could look good still, right? right. Yes. And this is heat. Heat for so. But you notice this is we have pepper and them kind of thing because it's heat we play, right? Right. So we could do anything so long as it hot, eh? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's fire and it's love on fire. Uh -huh. This right. one is love on fire. That's a female only section. Yeah, female. Well, when the, if you check the band really right, when we run through the band, you can see is only woman to split mass. <laughs> yeah, limited amount. It's like long time. Oh, it's right. only woman. So this is woman. This is woman. We just cater for really. This is rings of fire. So you know the Olympic ring. Mm -hmm. You could see the whole cast. You would speak for itself. Right. And this one is blue flames. And this one is, is hot, hot, hot. We are showing like we hot. 
sexy and they will be naked just to have some kind of costume. Because you notice we have, they can't see nothing on top of she there, but she still looks sexy. Right. right? <laughs> this is fire and ice. Well, the whole band kind of build around this one in a farm because this is one of the section we let them fellas they choose all, you know. And then we start to create the rest from around them kind of thing. Oh. This one is the all inclusive section. This is the woman part. We had the man part down in the tent. We didn't put down the giant body. Okay, we had the small fire. giant. Yeah, this is circus fire. Mm -hmm. This is another all inclusive. This is in the heat of the night. Yes, this one is called fiery. Okay. Right? So this is the basic 10 section of the band, plus with the king and queen and... The band leader, Elroy Blondie Bird Boyd, also told SVG TV that persons must keep their eyes peeled, as the band's junior and senior kings and queens are worth looking forward to. And when SVG TV visited what the Blondie Bird family refers to as the factory at the old printry building in Kingstown, band members were busy fine-tuning the various sections for Mardi Gras Day on Tuesday, July 8th. Reporting for Carnival Beat, I am Jamisha Wright. Tune in tomorrow for a glimpse of the 2014 production by the Adrenaline Mass Band. Let's